I wanted to tell Pride, the story of Pride, um, and, and the history of the last 50 years or so, because um, when I wrote my first book, Straight Jacket, there's a chapter specifically about the 80s and all the homophobia from the media in the 80s as HIV and AIDS kind of emerged and the kind of hysteria that, that came along with that. As I was kind of traveling the country doing talks about that, I had so many young people say to me, oh, I had no idea it was so bad. People were so homophobic oh, in the right. 80s. Yeah. And it just made me realize that we really don't know the history because how can it, can people understand if the history isn't being told? And even if you see what's happening in Birmingham, the schools and the parents are protesting, it's still controversial just to teach that LGBTQ people exist, let alone to actually tell the story of our lives and our history. So I just thought it was important at this anniversary of the Stonewall riots to, to tell that history. Well, it's hard to know in lots of, lots of ways how hate crime has changed because obviously, you know, um, until 1967 here, it was completely illegal. Those kind of numbers wouldn't have even been recorded for, for much of that time. But And I think there's so many people whose story, stories we don't know, you know, we rely on the little bits of history that we do know, but what was it really like, you know, to be gay in the, you know, in the 1950s and the 1960s and then the 1970s as things started to change? And the, the, story, the stories we do know are from people who were out or aware that they were gay, but there must have been generations of people who just completely pushed it down, completely suppressed it, got married, did everything they, they, they could to, to hide it because they were in fear for their lives. And I think now it's an issue. Now we record them, now the police uh, do largely take it seriously. Um, so that's a really positive step forward. But I feel there's quite a lot of people who are not out. You know, There's quite a lot of people who find themselves in situations with somebody that they maybe should be or they feel they shouldn't be. So there's all this kind of complication about shame and all these different things that kind of come into our experience. Um, so um, it's, it's really hard to know. I would certainly say that things are, are better, even just walking around here, we're in Nottingham today, and seeing you know, the rainbow flags and so many shop fronts. To think of where we've come from, I'm really glad that these kind of companies will put, you know, positive, we support LGBT pride, you know, and have rainbow flags in their windows. To me, I, I welcome that. Well, we just had that situation in London with the two women on, on the bus who I think were on either their first or an early date. And uh, there was a group of men who allegedly uh, asked them to kiss for them in front of them and then uh, attacked them. Um, clearly, it would be helpful if people could intervene in a situation like that. But I do understand that people are so scared now because, you know, it feels like things become escalate into such intense violence so quickly. But clearly, yeah, those those perpetrators or any perpetrators of any kind of crime need to know it's not acceptable. And that only happens if people do step in. So I think we all, as, as a society, have a responsibility to make sure that we do step in in some way that's safe to, to stop these things from happening. Um, I think it's everybody's responsibility to eradicate all hate crime and all, and all crime. I mean, I think that is the very fundamental nature of what society and community is meant to be. It's, it's really important that we are all there for each other because if I'm not there for you, if something bad was happening, then why would you be there for me if something bad was happening to me? You know, I see today what I have not seen in the past. I see straight people sticking up for, for gay people. And that's not to say that's everybody or that it's all over because there's still lots of people who are really homophobic and transphobic. Heaven knows we see that in the press all the time. Um, but I think things are getting better. We all have to take responsibility. If we all, if we, any of us see any kind of hate crime or anything like that, we, should, we need to make sure the police have been called, make sure the situation is dealt with, make sure that, that person is okay. You know, you shouldn't necessarily put yourself in harm's way, but you know, to do whatever you can safely to make sure that person is, is all right. You know, the scientists have been warning us that, that kind of, you know, that we're in danger of destabilizing the planet and that's what's happening. David Attenborough keeps saying that the collapse of civilization is on the horizon. I would say what we've been talking about, hate crime, we're talking about a civilized society. That's fundamentally what it means. If we're not a civilized society, that means I don't care. If I see someone beaten, beaten up, who cares? And human beings can be really, really, really violent. Um, and it's civilization that stops that. And so David Attenborough is saying civilization is on the verge of collapse. Um, what does that mean? That means potentially violent. So I think we don't make this a priority. We're going to see women in real trouble. We're going to see LGBTQ people in real real trouble. I'm someone who's campaigned for a long time, most of my life, specifically for LGBT issues. Um, but I think it's really important that we see the bigger picture, that other things that might not seem specific really do affect us. So I think it's really important that we really wake up, actually.